Hi everyone. Today, let's talk about the reciprocal lattice. So in the last mini lecture, we talked about regular lattices and crystals. Remember that we are starting to relax the free electron assumption, which we made in the Jude model. When we talked about the Sommerfeld model, we relaxed the assumption that the electrons are classical particles. Now we're starting to relax the assumption that they don't interact with the ions. Our first step in this involved a study of lattices. We talked about different kinds of lattices and crystals and how we think about them mathematically. Uh, today we'll continue in this vein. Uh, we're going to talk about something called the reciprocal lattice. So one way to mo motivate this discussion is to remember that in the Sommerfeld model, we found that it's convenient to work in K space. Remember that all of our integrals uh, were uh, done in, in energy or momentum space. And we even spent some time thinking about the volume per state in K space. So we're also going to think about uh, lattices in K space or reciprocal space. So let's define the reciprocal lattice. as the set of all wave vectors big K that give plane waves with the periodicity of the lattice. So another way to define the reciprocal lattice is to say that some vector k belongs to the reciprocal belongs to the reciprocal lattice. My goodness. Of the Brevet lattice. which will represent by big R, as long as e to the i uh, big K dot little r plus big R is the same as e to the i big K dot little r. So little r is any vector, big R is in the Brevet lattice and big K is in the reciprocal lattice. So what this means is that, of course, e to the i k dot big R is equal to one. Okay, so the Brevet lattice corresponding to uh, the reciprocal lattice, uh, we'll say is called the direct lattice. Okay, so in fact, it's true that the reciprocal lattice is also a Brevet lattice. So remember our definitions of Brevet lattice. The first one is that it looks the same from whichever lattice point uh, you choose. The second is that you can uh, define a set of primitive lattice vectors and express all vectors in the Brevet lattice as a linear combination of these primitive lattice vectors. Uh, so to see that the reciprocal lattice satisfies the second definition, let's define some vectors. First, b1 is equal to 2 pi a2 cross a3 over a1 dot 
a2 cross a3. Of course, the ai are primitive vectors of the direct lattice. B2 is 2 pi A3 cross A1 over uh, A1 dot A2 cross A3. And B3 is 2 pi A1 cross A2 over A1 dot A2 cross A3. So we'll see in just a minute uh, that the bi are also primitive vectors for the reciprocal lattice. Uh, at the moment, we have not uh, shown that. Um, first, let's note that bi dot aj is 2 pi delta ij. All right. Um, so you can uh, see that when i and j are not the same, uh, this is clearly zero. For example, if you look at our definition of B1, you can uh, very clearly see that B1 is perpendicular to both A2 and A3 as a result of this cross product. So when I now, for example, take B1.A2 or B1.A3, because B1 is perpendicular to both of those, uh, I'm guaranteed to get zero. Uh, when i is equal to j, uh, you can notice that a1 dot a2 cross a3 is the same as a2 dot a3 cross a1, which is the same as a3 dot a1 cross a2. This just follows uh, from some uh, vector product identities. You can see that when uh, i is equal to j, in fact, we will get 2 pi uh, from bi dot aj. So again, uh, if you take b1 dot a1, it's very clear that you can, uh, that the result is 2 pi. Uh, using these identities over here, you can see that, for example, b2 dot a2 also gives you 2 pi and so on and so forth. Good. Um, another thing to note is that the bi are not in the same plane. This is a fact that's inherited uh, from the fact that the ai also obey uh, the statement as well. So what we're free to do then is to pick an arbitrary vector little k and write it as a linear combination of b's. So here the ki are arbitrary. They're arbitrary numbers. Um, Good, so this is an arbitrary, as yet unspecified vector k. Uh, let's pick vector in the direct lattice, big R. We can write it as n1 a1 plus n2 a2 plus n3 a3. Here the ni are integers. That's because big R is in a brevet lattice. Now let's pick little k dot r using the identity uh, for the dot product between the b's and the a's. We can write this as 2 pi times k1 n1 plus k2 n2 plus k3 n3. Now you can see that in the case that the n, i are integers. We'll have e to the i 
little k dot big R is equal to one uh, because this quantity in parentheses will also be an integer. If all of the k's and n's are integers, little k dot r will be an integer multiple of two pi, and e to the i of little k dot r uh, is equal to one. So if the little k's are integers, then we have this true for all uh, little k vectors, um, but this then matches our definition of the reciprocal lattice. Uh, so we'll say that little k is in the reciprocal lattice. Which means that the bi are primitive vectors for the reciprocal lattice. Okay, so indeed the reciprocal lattice is uh, also a brevet lattice. Uh, one choice for the primitive vectors of the reciprocal lattice uh, are the b's that we just wrote down before. It's not so surprising that the reciprocal of the reciprocal lattice is the direct lattice. Uh, the reciprocal lattice of a reciprocal lattice is the set of vectors uh, g such that e to the i g dot big K is equal to 1, where K represents a vector in the original reciprocal lattice. Now if we're thinking about it as a, uh, a direct lattice, the reciprocal lattice vectors corresponding to the first reciprocal lattice vectors are those vectors g. Um, you can see that based on our earlier definition of the reciprocal lattice, g must be in the direct Bouvet lattice itself. This is, I hope, not too surprising. Um, so we can take one simple example here, the reciprocal lattice of a simple cubic lattice is also a simple cubic lattice. Using our uh, prescription before, we can write down some primitive vectors for this reciprocal lattice. One choice has b1 equal to 2 pi over a x hat, where a is the lattice constant, b2 is equal to 2 pi over a times y hat, and b3 is 2 pi over a times z hat. So the FCC real space lattice has a BCC, body-centered cubic reciprocal lattice. Likewise, the body-centered cubic real space lattice has a face-centered cubic or FCC reciprocal lattice. Uh, and these again are quite common in actual materials. Um, let's talk about the primitive cell of the reciprocal lattice. Uh, if the volume of, their, of the primitive cell in real space is B, The primitive cell volume in reciprocal space is 2 pi cubed over V. Remember in the last mini lecture, we talked about the Wigner sites primitive cell. That's a special construction of the primitive cell that uh, evinces the symmetries of the lattice. Uh, the Wigner sites primitive cell of the reciprocal lattice 
It's called the first Brillouin zone. Uh, this will come back uh, again and again in this course. Don't worry, you'll have many opportunities to become friends with uh, the first and other Brillouin zones. Okay, uh, a few other items of terminology here. We'll say that a lattice plane is any plane any three non-collinear Brevet lattice points. And we'll say that a family of lattice planes is a set of parallel lattice planes which are equally spaced. and contain all points in the Brevet lattice. So now there's a theorem that's related to lattice planes and families of planes. So the theorem uh, says that for any family of lattice planes, which are separated by distance d, There exist reciprocal lattice vectors which are perpendicular to the planes. And the shortest of which have length two pi over d. And the converse of this is also true. There's an extra E here. So for any reciprocal lattice vector big K, there is a family of lattice planes perpendicular to K. and they have spacing D. Where two pi over D is the length of the shortest reciprocal lattice vector parallel to K. So this theorem isn't uh, hard to prove. Uh, you can look in your textbook for the proof. Uh, it really hinges on the fact that 
the definition of the reciprocal lattice vector big K is such that e to the i big K dot r is equal uh, to one, where r is any vector in the Bouvet lattice. Um, if you'd like, big K is really a wave vector for uh, a plane wave. Uh, so big K is perpendicular to planes uh, in, the, uh, in, in the direct lattice, uh, uh, which all uh, have the same value of k dot r. So a reciprocal lattice vector k naturally defines a set of planes in the direct lattice, uh, which are perpendicular to it. Um, and of course, a plane wave is an infinite object. Uh, so there's a natural family of lattice planes, um, which include all of the points in the, in the Bouvet lattice. So you see that there is a, an important connection between reciprocal lattice vectors and lattice planes. Uh, this brings us to the topic of Miller indices. So uh, this is a, um, a prescription for specifying lattice planes of crystals uh, by using reciprocal lattice vectors. Uh, so we'll say the Miller indices of a lattice plane Are a set of three numbers. H, K, and L. So this K here has nothing to do with the reciprocal lattice, it's just a scalar. Um, so these three coefficients, H, K, and L, are the, the coefficients of the shortest possible reciprocal lattice vector normal uh, to that plane. So we'll give some examples of these in just a second here. Uh, so the idea is given some lattice plane, uh, we're going to index that plane by uh, the coefficients of the shortest reciprocal lattice vector k perpendicular to that plane. Goodness. Okay, so k here, which is not the same as the scalar k, is the shortest reciprocal lattice vector normal to the lattice plane that we are indicating with these three numbers, h, k, and l. Um, one potential ambiguity here is that the Miller indices of a lattice plane, you can see depend on your choice of primitive lattice vectors. So the common convention when you're talking about cubic crystals, uh, that includes simple cubic, body-centered cubic and face-centered cubic is to use a simple cubic set of uh, primitive lattice vectors. All right, so we'll indicate these three Miller indices in parentheses like this, H, K, L. A um, couple other important things. So negative numbers are specified with an overbar. So you wouldn't say, for example, negative h k l. You would say h bar k l. Um, square brackets something like this: n one, n two, n three. Set of three numbers in square brackets denote directions in real space. Okay, we'll say that families of planes are denoted by curly brackets. So to recap here, remember that three numbers in parentheses denote lattice planes, 
Three numbers in square brackets denote directions in real space. Three numbers in curly braces denote families of planes. Uh, for example, the 100, 010, and 001 planes are all equivalent in a cubic system. Uh, so we would call this the 100 family of lattice planes. And we'll denote uh, families of directions in real space with angle brackets. So let's get some practice with Miller indices. So let me first define a coordinate system for you. Here's x y and z. Now let's look at a simple cubic crystal. And let's write down the Miller indices of this lattice plane. Okay, so it's the left face of this cube. Now, to write down the Miller indices, we have to ask ourselves, what is the shortest possible reciprocal lattice vector that's perpendicular to this plane? Okay, so realizing that this is a simple cubic lattice, we know that the reciprocal lattice is also a simple cubic lattice. Uh, let's follow the convention and pick uh, the normal set, 2 pi over a, x hat, y hat, z hat, of primitive vectors for the uh, reciprocal lattice. Now, the vector that's perpendicular to this lattice plane points in which direction? Points in the x direction. So we'll say that the Miller indices of this lattice plane are 1, 0, 0. That means the shortest possible reciprocal lattice vector perpendicular to this plane points in the x direction. Its length is just uh, uh, 1 times uh, that reciprocal lattice primitive vector. So it's 1, 0, 0. Okay, let's take a different example. Let's pick the back face of this cube. What are the Miller indices of this lattice plane? Did you get it? It's 0, 1, 0. The reciprocal lattice vector that's perpendicular to this lattice plane points in the y direction. The shortest of these is uh, 1 times B2. So the Miller indices are 0, 1, 0. Okay, now let's pick a slightly more complicated example. Okay, let's pick this lattice plane. What are the Miller indices of this one? Okay, this one is one bar, one, one. So imagine a vector normal to this plane it points uh, a little bit up in the positive z direction, points a little bit toward you in the positive y direction, and a little bit to the right in the negative x direction. And that's where we get with, or that's how we come up with one bar one one as the Miller indices for this lattice plane. Okay, so this is a whirlwind tour of the reciprocal lattice. Uh, the next main lecture we'll talk about x-ray diffraction, uh, which is a closely related topic.